Hi everyone, thanks for watching. 2014 was a great year for my company. We produced an award-winning TV show, landed many new international corporate clients, and were featured in a variety of web articles, interviews, blogs, and magazines. 2014 was also the year that I decided to end my five-year run of shooting exclusively with HDSLR cameras. This review video is a departure from the planned HDSLR rig review series because I've added a new, affordable, portable ENG camera to my kit, which has improved the quality and profitability of my productions. In this video, I want to discuss my recent acquisition. Now, I spent more than three months researching hundreds of camera options and was becoming frustrated at the myriad of shortcomings I was finding from one camera to the next. I produce a wide variety of project types for an equally wide variety of clients, and I need a versatile camera. After three months of searching, I had still not found the right camera that fit my requirements. Eventually, I stumbled across a camera that seemed, and still seems, to have somehow gotten lost among all of the new and trendy technologies that are getting all the press. The camera that got my attention is the three-chip CMOS Panasonic AJ-PX270. As I dug deeper into learning about this camera and perused the surprisingly long list of specs, I kept wondering where the 270 was going to fall short, but it never did. Although I was concerned as to why this camera didn't seem to catch a spotlight in the press, I took the plunge and bought it anyway. In the months since buying this camera, I have not found a single scenario where the 270 has let me down. This camera is a true workhorse and has far surpassed my expectations in terms of versatility and image quality in an amazingly wide variety of projects. So let's take a quick look at a few of the reasons why I fell in love with the 270. The form factor of the 270 is not unique, but it's clear that Panasonic engineers thought a lot about how shooters will use this camera. As a small example, even the back of the camera is engineered with a nested battery and no protrusions. This way the camera can rest comfortably against your chest for even greater stability, even if you have two XLR audio cables attached. Another small example of the thought that went into this camera is that you don't even need a lens cap, since the hood includes lens cover shutters that snap shut. Although there is a startlingly deep menu system available for customizing the camera functions and image quality, important day-to-day -day settings are provided in the form of real buttons and knobs that you can quickly and easily adjust. The controls are all well-placed, and eight of the buttons are reprogrammable, so you can customize the layout to best fit your needs. The 270 has a bright 22 times optical zoom lens with excellent optical image stabilization and macro focusing. The zoom lens gives you the equivalent of a 28 to 616 millimeter optical zoom lens. Couple that with a surprisingly good two times digital doubler and you get a sharp zoom range from 28 millimeters to 1232 millimeters. Need to shoot in full auto? The 270 does a fantastic job when you're in a full auto run and gun situation, but for pros in need of manual control, the 270 is very much built for you. Not only do the versatile manual control options allow you to customize the shooting experience to fit your needs, the lens has independent focus, zoom, and iris rings. There are three optical neutral density filters built in, so no need to carry third-party ND filters. You can shoot 60 frames per second at 1080p for high quality slow motion, and you have over under cranking ranging from 1 to 60 frames per second in 25 steps. The 270 includes a wide variety of recording formats available in the AVC Ultra family. On the high end, you have the absolutely incredible AVC Intra 200 as well as AVC Intra 100 and 50. Shooting a long form presentation, such as a seminar, the AVC Long Gop 50 and 25 formats will give you the perfect balance between bandwidth friendly and super high quality. And you have several AVC proxy formats for low bandwidth direct to web shots or to use as quick reference footage that you can record simultaneously with the higher quality formats. So you have recording formats that range in bandwidth from 200 megabits per second to 800 kilobits per second. If that isn't enough, you also have several legacy formats like DVC Pro HD, DVC Pro 50, DVC Pro, and even DV Mode. Many of the recording formats support in-camera 10-bit 422, which not only provides exceptional broadcast image quality, 
10-bit 422 is excellent for green screen or heavy hitting secondary color correction and effects. Almost as varied as the recording formats are the recording media options. This camera has two slots for Panasonic's brilliant new Micro P2 cards, one full-size P2 card slot, which is a great addition for those of us who have been shooting with legacy P2 cards, and one SD card for saving and sharing all of your custom camera settings. If you don't want to buy Micro P2 cards, which you should, they're amazing and affordable, you can use high-end SD cards instead of Micro P2 for many of the recording formats. The 270 gives you options for how you want the cards to work together. For example, you can set the camera to relay record so you can pull one full card to offload footage while the camera continues recording to the second card. With relay recording, you can shoot for an entire day without stopping the camera once. Very handy if you're shooting seminars or other live productions. And about those Micro P2 cards, I had originally thought Panasonic was just rebranding typical high-speed SD cards and charging a premium. I could not have been more wrong. These cards are amazing. They record at a much higher bandwidth than typical SD cards because they are up to 12 times faster and are the only way to handle bandwidth intensive formats like AVC Intra 200. The Micro P2 cards have a built-in RAID system as well as encryption. In addition, your footage is protected. Even if the camera battery dies or you accidentally pop the card out in the middle of a shot, you will only lose up to two seconds of footage. Just try that with a standard SD or compact flash card. For professional work, you have six scene file settings, seven gamma modes, including three different film rec modes, and a 12-axis matrix control to dial in skin tones. This is unheard of at a camera at this price point. And of course, you can customize these settings to your heart's content. The 270 has a fantastic zoom rocker. Push the rocker all the way down and you'll cover the full zoom range in only about three seconds. Give the rocker a gentle nudge and the ultra slow servo zoom will take as long as 180 seconds to go the full range. On the top handle, not only do you have both 3 8 inch and quarter inch threaded accessory mounts, you have record start and stop, a zoom rocker, and controls to navigate often used menu options, as well as playback of recorded clips. For viewing, you have a crisp, high resolution OLED viewfinder, and an amazing IPS LCD monitor, which has two focus assist functions. For those wedding videographers out there, this camera has advanced flash band compensation to even out those flashes from still photographers. And there are multiple choices for streaming footage as you shoot or downloading footage you've already shot, with both wired and wireless options available. Is there anything I don't like about the 270? Well, no camera is absolutely perfect and the 270 has one thing I would like to see upgraded. Clean HDMI output is fantastic if I want to use an external HDMI recorder to capture my footage. But if I want to use the HDMI out for an external monitor, I'd like to be able to toggle on the same camera status info that appears in the built-in monitor. Luckily, this can be fixed with a firmware update. I've talked to Panasonic Engineering about this and they're taking a look. This is a small issue, which you can overcome by either keeping the built-in monitor open or by checking the status of the camera with a quick look in your viewfinder. Although I'd like to see this remedied, this small issue doesn't even come close to dampening my enthusiasm for this camera. Overall, the list of strengths in the 270 is long and I have not even really scratched the surface. I'll close with an alphabet soup of input and output options. You've got USB 3 and separate USB 2 ports for host and device functions, clean HDMI Ethernet LAN port, and 3G SDI out for connecting to an external recorder or monitor, dual XLR audio inputs, timecode in and out, gen lock in, video out, industry standard remote control ports, headphone and audio out ports. With so many input output options available, this camera will operate within a great many production workflows. As I said earlier, the 270 is a surprise. The biggest surprise being that it hasn't gotten the public recognition that I think it deserves. This is a truly amazing piece of technology and clearly engineered with us shooters in mind. The 270 will fit into an array of workflows and productions and the image quality is exceptional even in low light. Although I will certainly continue to use my HDSLR cameras for some projects, the Panasonic AJPX270 is now my go-to camera for the majority of my work. Thank you.